Well, howdy, folks. Welcome back to Farm Manager uh, 2021. I hope you're having a great day. Seems like you guys are into this, and uh, I kind of am too. I don't know if I'm committed to doing like a 20 video series or anything, but you tell you what, as long as you guys are interested in this and you show, you know, you show your interest in this by with your comments and likes and things, we'll keep going. How's that sound? When, when it seems to die down, maybe we'll wrap it up. But for the time being, I'm having a good time in it. It's kind of relaxing and it's got its own. It's got its own pace to it, you know? And I kind of like it. It's, it's farming, man. So, in this little country life, what are we up to? Well, you'll notice we had the vet come by here. We actually had a six sheep at the start of this, but thankfully, uh, all our sheep are healthy now. And um, our sheep are kind of getting a little bit irritable. I mean, they're okay with our food, but I do need to kind of start maybe giving them a tiny bit more variety, I think. And you'll also notice that even though we purchased five sheep at the start of this whole thing, I've also added an extra pen. We have six in this pen, not five, huh? And seven in this pen. Oh yes, now you might think, oh, you bought more. No, I didn't, they'll breed. Of course the sheep will breed. As long as there's space left in the pen, they will breed. So you don't necessarily have to go up and buy a whole bunch of them. However, to ramp up the sheep milk production, it might be a good idea to get 10 because each of these pen can hold 10 sheep. I'm gonna let it go for now though, because I'm actually not processing sheep milk. Both of my milk processing plants are focused on the cows because I have a lot of it and uh, I kind of need one more of these buildings. So I'm gonna let money bank up just a little bit so that I can get another one of those buildings. And you see, we can keep selling the cow cheese. Let's actually take a look at how the state of our farm is doing right now, right? I'll put this on one time speed for now. So we have our staff list. If we go to overview, we can see that they're somewhat happy. You know, they're doing okay. Their effectiveness is kind of, you know, hanging around, you know, kind of in this middle ground area. We can improve this if we'd like to. For example, I can come over here to this tab and there's training. You can manage the training of your staff or into other things. For example, if I wanted to, I could get the use of renewable energy sources and unlock wind farms. And that would allow me to generate my own electricity. So I wouldn't have to worry about that from the grid, but I can also over, over generate which is what often we do when we invest in renewable energies. We invest in the ability to over-generate our power so that we can sell it back to the power provider. Uh, in this case, our power company or whatever, right? So we could also start looking at doing that too. It's a little bit of an investment. It takes a lot of space. So maybe not quite yet because uh, we're not really using a whole lot of power, but later on we might want to. The other thing we can do is we can train our people in other types of skills. Uh, so the agricultural machinery training example will increase our durability for our agriculture machines. I like this. I'm going to go ahead and try to train that now because we're going to get started working with agricultural training or agri agricultural machining and stuff. Um, we can also increase our employee strength and all this stuff. Lots and lots of stuff that we can use to invest in. This is kind of like a tech tree, but I consider it more like an investment, right? What do we want to invest our money in at this time sort of thing? And it takes quite a, quite a long time to do each of these things. Okay, so like I said, we had the vet visit and every time these guys are ready to breed, we need a vet to come out. And the vet is like $200 every time we have to call them out here. It might serve us better, and I think it will serve us better as we expand the, the more animals we have, to have our own vet local. So let's go ahead and build. And there's a veterinary clinic right here. The vet will ensure good conditions of your animals and cure them when needed. It cost me $18,000 now. So upfront, a lot of cost compared to just saying, hey, 245 bucks and you know, whatever. Like it's gonna take a long time for this thing to pay for itself. But we're gonna be running this a long time. Presumably if we keep going with the series, of course, we're gonna be running this a long time. So having our own vet clinic for 30 bucks a month might make more sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. And we want this vet to be positioned where it's going to be able to see all of the pens. And that means it's going to be kind of, I'm going to kind of work it back a little bit here. In fact, you know what? Let's put it alongside this road right about, let's say here. It should cover us over time on every single pen we build at this point right here. So let's go ahead and build the vet clinic right there. And I'm actually going to take, and um, I was going to do some paved roads and I, I'm kind of thinking I will do some paved roads. So let's give the vet the ability to get to our animals even faster with some paved roads now it doesn't look like the game has the ability to upgrade existing roads and i kind of wish it did but as i try to build this road it will not allow me to do it so what it looks like i have to do unfortunately is take away an existing road 
and then simply rebuild it. It's not that big of a deal because you can pause the game and just do it immediately, um, but it would be a good quality of life change for the game to allow upgrading roads when the, you know, when the need arises. But going along that note though, I think we're gonna have this and this will be our vet clinic and we'll go from there. Now I'm gonna need, in order to do agriculture, we're gonna need more staff and more staff housing because we already have eight out of eight workers in both of these houses. So I'm gonna take our, this little extra cash that we have right now and start looking at how we can expand for the future here. So we're gonna take permanent employees and you know, as we expand for more animals, right? We're gonna need these guys to work there too. So I'm gonna put another house right there. And um, I think maybe we'll mark, sort of mark down where another one can go. So if we wanted to have another house right there, it looks like the road can go right alongside this veterinary clinic. Awesome. So let's just have this road go all the way up like that. Okay, so we have an extra path in now. Uh, I am going to go ahead now that that truck is off the road. I'm going to go ahead and just remove this road really quick. And uh, we'll go ahead and upgrade it with a paved road. Because this is a pretty high traffic road, of course. And uh, we could probably do it with this one too. Maybe just upgrade all the roads. I might do that over time. Oh, hang on. This does not. This doesn't look good, does it? Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Over time, I think I'll upgrade them all. But for now, I'm happy with just this. Uh, especially this one right here to the workshop. Honestly, yeah, yeah. This one right here to the workshop. Uh, workshop. Uh, the the storage. Right. That makes a lot more sense. Actually, the warehouse. There you go. I got the word. The warehouse. Right. Uh, because, again, these are high traffic roads. There's going to be a lot of logistics and stuff on these roads. We're going to want to... Oh, look at that. It's like time progresses as we as we do it. There is a tiny bit of progression in time as we build these roads. That's interesting. <laughs> That's actually pretty interesting. Put this all the way over there, and then this road can come straight down. Uh, nope. It needs to come straight down like this. Honestly, this is probably good enough for upgrading roads. These ones don't need it, but the high tra higher traffic ones or cases where we want people to be able to get there quicker, like the vet, we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay. So now we got the roads upgraded. Everything's good. And we're going to start w looking at what does it take to start doing agriculture, right? Because remember last time we said you can grow your food a lot cheaper. Well, here's the thing. Grass is very cheap as is. Take a look at what it costs to buy it, right? And this is what I say, like, choosing when to do agriculture, I think, is a, is a pretty good is a pretty good thing, right? Like, when is it better for you to grow your own food than it is to buy it? Because even though it is cheaper to produce it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to pay you back in a reasonable amount of time compared to investing that money and manpower into other things. So let's take a look at that really quick. Organic grass. So... At this current price, we're paying about 50 cents for a kilogram of this. If I wanted, for example, let's say 40,000 units of this grass, it would cost me, it looks like I only have enough storage space for this much. So let's say if I wanted 37,000 units of this grass, it would cost me $18,000. All right, $18,000 is a lot of money. However, let's take a look at what it would cost us to grow it. Well. 37,000, 40,000 ish is about what I can get from a full harvest on a, on a full size field. So full size field is going to run me about here, right? Now, just to make this, just to make this field, it's 11, it's 11 grand. Okay. But that doesn't even get into the cost of making it. We still need all the machinery that goes with it too. Things like the tractor, you get tractor. That's $45,000. This tractor alone cost me as much as like 120,000 units of that grass, right? And that's like three full harvests of it. Uh, this tractor alone costs that much, right? So at what point does harvesting grass and growing that organic grass actually pay us? It's going to take a long time for it to pay for itself. I'm not sure I'm ready for that expense. However, we might get, we might be able to do well by harvesting and growing some of the other things to increase the quality of our food. Things like organic oats and fodder beets, right? And I guess these crops, right? So we might want to start growing these things. Is there anything that we can do that overlaps? Well, 
not really. We could probably add some wheat, I suppose, to the food for the for the sheep. And maybe we start growing wheat. So what does it cost to grow wheat? Well, I think actually I'll start the fields somewhere else. Um, let's start them on this side. Let's say we wanted to have a big O field, as big as we can. Uh, actually, is it is it good to go this? Let's see. So this is 52 wide, right? 52. Um, how far can we go from this side here? Yeah, so this is 52. So right about to this point, I kind of want to see if I can make these fields exactly the same size. So this is 104. So exactly 52 would get us halfway, except it won't because... Unfortunately, that's not quite how it works. Uh, this right here would end up being the end point. I think I'll show you. I, it doesn't end up actually being that, I don't think, unless I'm just horribly wrong. Uh, because there's like a space between them or something. So 42, 52. We could actually back off. We want a road between these things, right? So let's back off one, go 48 by 48. And then this one can be... 52 by 48 so we could go 48 by 48 here i guess it would have been the same size but i still want to have a road between these things yeah i really do actually another road here would be good too so why don't we eliminate this field temporarily we only got to get a little bit of that money back it's kind of a waste let's start on this side 52 we'll go one back to 48 by 48 oh, we can go deeper too let's do that 48 by 52 there okay uh, and then if I wanted to do another 48 by 52, I could do it right here. And now I have room for the roads. So I think we'll do two fields. So, and we're not, we don't necessarily have to do anything with these fields right away, but this is sort of like the start of it all, right? So first I'm going to take some gravel roads and I'm just going to make a gravel road between these two things. So they can access them on both sides if they'd like to. Okay. Now. To start this process, first we need to decide what we're going to plant. So I think in this big field here, maybe we look at what it takes to do fodder beets. Okay, something extra for our for our cows, right? We could do oats, but oats are actually incredibly expensive because we need the Xena combines, and those combines are 300 grand. So I don't really want to do oats right now. I'm going to buy the oats. That's a huge investment. But if I look at getting fodder beets instead, that's pretty good. Remember, we also want to click the bio button here so that we can do organic. So let's start working on the fodder beets on this field. And to do that, we're going to need all this equipment, but we don't need a combine, thankfully. So it's not going to be as expensive. But this equipment, we need a place to store it all, right? We can start by getting a tractor. It has to be brand new. So we'll go ahead and get the tractor. We'll buy this here. I could also lease it, but that monthly expense does not equal like, we're not, it's, it's not going to pay itself back very fast. I would rather buy it. So let's buy the tractor. And I'm going to have that stop or parked in right here where the farmer's house is. Okay. Now, that cost us a ton of money, dude. That's $45,000. We're only at $8,700 now, right? We don't have hardly any money left. Well, let's see what else we need for this field. So let's see if we can get ourselves a lily plow. And we'll place that right here next to this. Now, with the plow in place... Your employees will start plowing the field. We have enough equipment now to plow this field. So the first stage of what this needs is already set. We have the equipment to do that. But if we want them to try doing it by hand, and they'll hate it, but if we want them to try doing it manually, we can click this button here, and it will allow manual labor, <laughs> okay? So now we have, we can have people working the fields manually if we need it. They're not gonna like it much, but if you wanna do it, we can, okay? So, um, I actually don't like the way this looks. Hang on, this is distracting me. Put this all the way over like this. That looks better. All right, so in this, let's see if we can hire some employees. Um, I'm gonna work on somebody who has machining skills is probably good, endurance skills is good, we'll hire them. Um, let's take a look at anyone with great planting skills, or anything, anyone who's good with plants. Plants and endurance is great too. And I think for now, we'll focus on just those three guys, okay? So we should see somebody come on over here um, and start using this tractor, right? There they go. And they're going to start plowing the fields from this point and putting it all the way over, right? So we're plowing the fields, getting it ready to plant. Now, again, this is incredibly expensive stuff once you start getting into it. And you can see that I'm in debt now, $30,000. It's just because I haven't been selling my products. 
so I need to sell it. We're also getting sheep's wool. That's pretty good. And we have a lot of sheep milk. I could just straight up sell this all for $19,000 right now, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna bank it up because I would like to start processing it at some point. So uh, it looks like we're starting to dig into our cow's milk supply a little bit more. I don't know if we're digging into it enough, but we're digging into it. One thing I haven't found in the game is a way to take a loan. I would like that very much. Um, I, I haven't found a place to do that yet. I don't know if it exists. Um, that's very odd. I can have different layers and stuff and warnings, but I have yet to find any location in the game's menus where they allow you to take a loan for your business. So uh, I won't be able to do that, which means I just have to let it run, um, you know, to recuperate the cost. Because again, we're starting to plow the fields. We're not gonna be able to do anything with these. I probably shouldn't have planted this extra field, but you know, it, it's a setup for later, right? It's not gonna harm anything by just letting it sit here with nothing. All it is is a cost to set it up and, um, you know, just kind of leaving it there, so. So in any case, I guess I'm gonna let it run for a little bit and um, you know we'll keep selling the milk. And when we come back, I'll come back when I have enough money. Yeah, I'll cut back in for you guys when I have enough money to actually start working this field. Because right now we do not currently have the proper equipment to pull this off. We need the cultivators and the manure spreaders and all that stuff. So give me a, give me a second, I'll be right back. All right, so we have a lot of sheep now. Right, and uh, I'm gonna let them keep, you know, being born naturally, so I don't have to buy them. But we're getting close to the fact where we have almost five full pens, and we're producing enough milk now to where I've turned the milk, this milk processing plant on for the goat cheese, uh, the, sorry, the sheep cheese, because it's like the most profitable thing we could do right now. So now they each have their own product, and we'll expand this over time as we need to. Now I've got uh, about forty-four thousand. Let me go ahead and just sell what we've got available here to. Uh, Actually, I can just queue up the whole thing in selling, so we'll just do that. Um, so we have $54,000 now. I've gone ahead and I've built a couple of things. I've built two garages, and uh, these can store... It's got six parking spots, six storage spots. And, uh, and then I've also built this little parking spot or parking area, and this has 12. I'm going to pause it really quick just so nothing crazy happens while I'm explaining this. Oh, new sheep being born. Nice. <laughs> All right, so it says we don't have the machines to do this and stuff, right? We're going to go ahead and buy those machines now. We have 54000 I don't think that's enough to buy all the equipment, but it's at least enough to get started in building the equipment or at least buying the equipment that we need for the next stage so that my staff can get going on it. So the, st the stuff we need now is an ester cultivator. This is, a, this is used for loosening and crushing the soil after plowing in order to prepare the ground for sowing. We can pay 1500 for this uh, brand new and we will. And um, you can see the size is one by two. So that means that it's going to take up two spots. And uh, this little cultivator, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the garage. And we'll just line it up about like this. I think we'll feasibly, you'd probably want it lined up, uh, you know, facing the door to where it could just be hooked up to the tractor. I don't think it really matters. It, it doesn't matter in the game. I know it doesn't, but I'm gonna put it there anyway. So we're gonna store this in the garage. Now, there's two different things you can do here, and let's just look at the balance of it. So the parking spaces has 12 parking spots. It costs 15,000 to build this, and it's gonna cost us $50 a month, okay? The garage has only six parking spots, costs 20,000 to build, but it only costs $30 a month. But the thing is, in order to have the same amount of parking spaces, you need two of these, which means $60 a month. So it's more expensive to build them and it's more expensive monthly to get those 12 parking spaces with the garage. However, having the garage increases the durability of your machinery by 30%. And over time, the more you need mechanics to come out and fix things and pay seemingly thousands of dollars sometimes to fix your equipment, the garages as a long-term can actually cost you less than having your stuff out here. But I like to put some stuff out there because it makes sense to have it out there. Uh, okay, maybe not makes sense, but you'll see what I mean. Some of this stuff is really big to the point where just feasibly you wouldn't want to push it through the door, okay? Uh, we'll look at it in a second. So we're going to look at the manure spreader next. This is 6,300. It's one by two. So we'll go ahead and buy that brand new, and we're going to stick it in the same garage, okay? And I'm just going to turn it to where it's going to be like that, all right? So the trailer would, uh, you know, 
pick it up just outside the door, right? And that's pretty big too. So like if fitting through that door, I don't know about that, man, but it is what it is, okay? Uh, the next thing we want is going to be this precision seeder. And a precision seeder is used to make a spe specified crop uh, on previously loosened soil, uh, loosened fields. This allows for precise placement of the seeds in order to obtain the best yields. I'm reading these descriptions for myself as well as for you because I don't know how many of you guys have done farming before, but I know I haven't. So I'm going to just read all of these so that we can learn what each of these things do. So I'm going to put this in the garage as well. And I think we'll probably put, since there's only one spot here, right? I mean, obviously it'd be hard to get this usually, but anything that's only one tile big, we're going to go ahead and just put them in here. So we'll stick that there. And then we'll go back over to here. Now this is the trailer with water and this is used for irrigation and stuff. Uh, it's, it's two by two. It's pretty large. And because it's two by two, I don't think it makes sense to put it inside, you know, one of these. So we're going to buy this. It's 3,500. And if we wanted to put it in a garage, like we could, but again, look how big it is. It's just like, it doesn't make sense to go, you know, like through there, they have to like adjust it and move it over. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't fit. So I'm just gonna put this trailer uh, right over here and uh, we'll stick it like right here, I guess. And so they can access it outside. It, it just looks like something you, you wanna store outside. You know, it's really wide, it's super wide, like too wide to get through the doors. Uh, next, we're gonna take a look at uh, okay, so I do the sprayer, but the sprayer is very expensive. It's $20,000 and I mean, I'm gonna do it, but it's very expensive. So I have to watch my money a little bit here. Um, let's go ahead and put the sprayer down. Uh, is this the way it's lined up? I think it's lined up this way. We'll just do it. So we've got equipment inside here now, and that should mean that there's enough to get this the next stage of this running. So you can see the icons went away and now the staff is gonna go in here, pick up the equipment they need and they're gonna start managing this field. Now the thing is, right? I said it's very expensive to start getting our own grass and everything because of the expense of the equipment, but the equipment is not just used for one field, right? This field, for example, is gonna need this equipment too. So I'm gonna go ahead and start actually start grass now so that we don't have to buy it because we're already investing in some other equipment for other crops. And we can double dip that a little bit. So let's actually just go ahead and do it. I, I've changed my mind. <laughs> for you guys, it seems like I just instantly changed my mind or something. But um, I've been playing this for a little bit to get the money up. So I just, you know, sitting around thinking about things, you know, you know, how country folk do taking my time with it. <laughs> hey, I'm from a small town, so I get the whole country folk thing. Um, I just never did any country folk things like I never I never farmed um, you know what I'm starting to think also that uh, we might start using more manure than this I don't know I'm also starting to think that I should have manure storage maybe closer to where the crops are but ultimately I don't know like, I don't think it really matters either they have to haul it from here over to over here or they have to go get it from over there I don't think it matters this is more time intensive for for staff than the fields are I think so in any case, we got $18,000, but we probably have a lot of stuff we can sell. So let's go ahead and get some of that sold and some of the cheese sold. Very good. And we also are generating wool. It's not a lot of money, but every once in a while, it's nice to, to sell it. So, all right. Now, you notice I just sold all that stuff, but I have $64 and that's it. That's because we just paid wages, right? Start of every month, right? It's the first now. Winter starts in 112 days, and I have no idea what that means for me, <laughs> but I probably should start storing things. Uh, I assume it means that silage and stuff is going to have to be stored for the winter in silos. So uh, when I get a little bit more cash, I think I might want to start building a silo just so we can get that stuff, because I don't know what that's going to do for our animals, right? Winter, it's probably not great. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. New animals being born all the time. Yep, yep, more sheep. It says I don't have enough staff. Let's hire a little bit more, I guess. Um, actually, we probably don't have it because I put them in manufacturing. So let me see really quick. We have some people who are good at planting. This is an endurance person, um, machines person, manufacturing and machines. I think I put a planter in here, but I don't remember. Just to fill up the spot. Yeah, plants. So let me, um, 
I want to I want to I want to get rid of Daniel in here. We'll take Daniel away from this spot and we'll put in uh, actually that's it. Let's just leave this at 3 people for now. Eh. You know what? Let's just hire. Let's just hire one more person who's good at manufacturing. Albert, you can Oh, you're very expensive. Albert was expensive, I think. No, Albert was about on par. It's okay. Let's get Albert in here. This gives me three staff. Is that not enough? You know, it's probably not enough to do it by hand is, is what it means. But that's okay, because we're going to buy more equipment. We need a potatoes digger and a, ch and a chest trailer. Those things are pretty expensive. Uh, at least the potatoes digger is. So we're going to have to wait a little bit more time on that. So let me go ahead and keep selling my stuff. Selling my cheese. <laughs> uh, actually, let's, can I get the trailer right now? It's eight thousand dollars. I can't. I can't get that yet. What about the potatoes digger? Thirty-five k. Yeah, I need a lot more money for that. So uh, we'll have to wait on that, and then we'll get going. But you see, notice they're gonna they're gonna use the other equipment, right, to do the grass anyway. So we'll start growing our own grass, and I think it's probably a good idea to do that, just because again the winter is coming, and I sort of forgot about that. And um, we're gonna need to make sure we have lots of food and stuff stored up for the winter. I don't know whether or not these are gonna work for this or not. I don't know, we'll see. It may not be good enough to use these for the winter. We may need silos. And that's what these are for. They're not that expensive. Um, maybe we just get a silo back here. Ooh, here we go. Right in this little spot that we're not using right now. I like it. You can get a silo. Put it right behind the barn like this. We'll build one silo for now. I like how they don't have to build it. It's just placed. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's good. Also, I think there's a video on YouTube. You really should be... I mean, I don't normally call channels out. But if you haven't seen Smarter Every Day, right? If you haven't... Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's Smarter... Yeah, it's, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Smarter Every Day that did this. Uh, they had a video. Destin had a video... Uh, like looking at the internals of like these silos and stuff you should really check that out it's very fascinating uh if you're if you're not a farmer person you might you might like those types of videos and to learn things outside your outside your norm right um let's go ahead and just sell all of these things Thirty-three thousand, not quite enough i can buy the trailer though maybe we'll just buy the trailer for now or we can buy something that's needed for over here what's this what's wrong this do you not have storage for it wait it's not giving me maybe it's over here no warehouse you don't have the right warehouse or site to store oh manure oh are you do you have to be like in range oh this manure is just out of range for this well, that takes care of it, doesn't it? <laughs> we're gonna need another one. Uh, we're gonna need another one. I, I don't want to want to put it right next to the farmer's house, um, but I mean, we clearly need it to be closer to the crops and stuff. So why don't we put it back? Um, why don't we put it back over here on the road? I guess we're gonna put it right behind the farmer's house. That's gross. <laughs> I don't want to do that, man. Oh, that stinks. It does actually. It's gonna stink. <laughs> Uh, I'll put it, uh, I'll put it right here, I guess. This covers pretty much all these crops. So we have manure storage there, and then maybe we'll get this transferred over or something. <laughs> Darn. In any case, that'll take care of that. I've never seen that symbol before, because I, when I was doing my playtesting for it and stuff, I, uh, I never did organic. And then it was like, after I saw the price differences on organic, that's when I kind of went, okay, yep, this is what we need to do. Um... So anyway, do we have all the equipment we needed for this? Okay, we need a seed drill. That's 6,500, we can build this. And uh, I forgot how big this was. How, how big are you? Okay, this is fine. Um, so we'll store the seed drill over here in this, in this one here. And it's probably gonna be this side, yep. That should hopefully get them going on this crop even more. Uh, after that, we're gonna need a mower. This is only one by one. So we're gonna place that uh, in the garage. And we'll place this kind of maybe back here like so. There's fine. Okay, what else do we need for this? 
Looks like we're going to need a wind rower. That's not that expensive. We can get that done. Uh, and also, you, you, I, I said I was going to read the description of these. My bad. A mower is pretty self-explanatory, I think. But the wind rower is used for raking up the grass. So after we kind of like go through and cut it all down, we need to rake it all up, right? And that's what this little thing is going to do. It looks pretty cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and buy that. And we'll put it in the garage. And it's going to be right there. Yeah, right there. All right, sweet. Uh, the last thing it looks like we need here is the self-loading trailer. Is that the same thing we need over here? It is not. We need a chest trailer over here, which is $8,000. And we're going to place that outside. And we can put this right over like so. Okay, good. So we're, we're almost getting the right equipment we need, right? We're, we're kind of slowly getting it done. And uh, it takes a little bit to get all this stuff, especially since like some of these more complicated ones... Uh, some of these more expensive ones, I mean, like, um, and actually might serve us well to have another another tractor because right now they can only do one field at a time. But if, eventually, that's not a big deal now. But eventually, we're gonna want more than one tractor because we're gonna have a lot more fields, right? So that's just something we gotta work with. Uh, but let's see, what does this cost? The self-loading trailer, eighteen grand. Again, we can lease these things. I would rather not. And I think the ending result here. Uh, potatoes digger is used uh, it's a potato combine used to harvest potatoes for full operation uh, machine requires two workers who clean potatoes with contamination the first digging potatoes machine requires to collect later the crops manually okay and you can see like even though it's called a potatoes digger it's going to be d used on crops that are kind of similarly shaped and sized so you get things like the the beets they're going to be also harvested with the same potatoes digger right um, so that's why you kind of need that. And right now, we're not quite ready for this. It doesn't look like. Um, we don't have the tractor, right? So this is already complaining. I don't have the tractor to work this. But that's okay, right? We, we're going to slowly build that up, and we're going to get that done. The tractor's 45 grand, so it's a little bit expensive. In any case, though, I'm going to let it run just for a little bit longer so we can start seeing these crops be harvested. And uh, I think you'll notice... Uh, I might need to buy grass one more time. 2200 I think, is enough. As long as we can get these... Oh. Oh, this is outside of range for the warehouse, too. For the barn. Oh, these buildings are just out of range. Oh, that, that feels bad. We're going to have to build another barn. Uh, I didn't think about that one. Okay. Well, we'll build another barn that can be in range of all these crops. I guess it will be next to the road here, like this. Yeah, it's going to cover the edge there. So I guess it'll be right next to the vet there. An extra barn that they can store the extra stuff in. Fair enough. Darn it. Hate that when that happens. 18 grand. I can buy this now. And we're going to put this in parking because it's big. And we're going to stick that... Uh, just like, yeah, right here is fine. All right. I believe I have all of the equipment necessary now to do grass. Yep. All of the equipment to get the grass done is good. So we should be seeing that happen. There is a little bit of manure in here. Now we can use it for fertilizer. I, I almost, I, I want to kind of tear this down almost, you know, like, I guess logistics is going to be working there, right? My hope is that the, these guys can manually bring the manure into this and then logistics can take it from here and bring it over where it needs to go and kind of even them out. All right. Anyway, I'm going to let this run now. Uh, once I have enough money, we're halfway through the month now. But once I have enough money to get this final piece of equipment, then um, I'll bring you guys back in so you can see the harvest. Okay. What's the spraying antifungus organic? Oh, I have some of that stuff. Cool. Um, I'll, I'll get that done and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got enough money to buy this thing now, and it just hit autumn uh, a couple of days ago in game. So it kind of warned me that this is like usually when harvesting needs to happen, and this is our last chance to sort of use the ground before the first frost sort of thing. So uh, I got me a little nervous on what's going to happen in the winter, but this is 35000 I could also buy a used one. I'm, I'm going to spend it on the new one, and this is 2 by 3 so it's bigger than the space we have available in these other two parking spots. So I went ahead and unfortunately had to buy another parking spot. Uh, so this outdoor parking area, 
because this is very large. Um, it's not going to fit anywhere inside any of these. I mean, not unless I use a dedicated garage for only this. So for the uh, potatoes thing, we're going to pop it in right here. And I think it's probably going to be this way. Yep. All right. So we're going to pop it there. But that means we have the equipment necessary to take care of both of these two fields, all right? So let's take a look at what this interface looks like in case you haven't seen it yet. Uh, we have the health of the crop here and also how much irrigation it has. This is the screen area is sort of its progress into when it's gonna be available and stuff. It also gives us a, an estimated sort of like how much uh, days are left. And uh, we also can see any, any current operation. So in this case, um, we have this organic spray stuff that we're gonna be spraying over it, right? So. This is going to start happening now from the sprayer here. And then over here, we can see that all of this is, I uh, got 29 days left. So I think both of these crops having just under a month left is okay. Winter starts in 85 days. So we should be able to get a full harvest on both of these. But it's got me concerned about our aminals. Yeah, I said it, aminals. That's how my son said it. So I thought it was cute. So there it is, aminals. Um, we have got 2,400 cow's milk. We're going to keep doing this, but um, I've switched this one back to cow's milk now because it uh, we just are accumulating cow's milk faster than one of these can do it. And unfortunately, even though our sheep pens are now maxed out at 10 each, yeah, unfortunately, even though that's happening, that's still not quite enough milk to go with full production on four people being housed in there. So I switched it back to cow's milk so we can hopefully make some extra cash because uh, we need to make a lot more yellow cheese here, right? Um, I don't know how winter is going to affect our food prices and such. And I'm also a little bit concerned about our ability to store access food, like the grass, for example, um, because this silo is not in range of these crops either. So they're, they're pretty cheap to build a silo. Um, I don't know if that's usually the way it is, but uh, it seems like it's pretty cheap to build them. At least the, the medium ones anyway. So I'm going to pop a silo, I think, also back behind this. Uh, well, I could probably do it right on the road, honestly. I want them to be in range of these crops. So, hmm. Maybe we put them right in the back here like this, right behind the house. That's probably okay. Yeah. We're going to pop a silo right back here, too. And then whatever we got to use it for, whatever these guys want to use it for, that's what we can do. I may need even more silos than this, but I don't know. I don't know what to expect for the winter, man. Uh, yeah, vet, the vet's been han handling things really well. We've been, uh, you know, get, we get sick animals sometimes. The sheep are pretty finicky about what they eat. And uh, they seem to get sick quite often with just this too. We want to have more variety in our food. Cows, uh, we're going to start working on that a little bit too with our fodder beets once we harvest them. And then for the sheep, I'll probably buy some wheat right now just to kind of give them some extra food but they're very expensive so like buying food and stuff is very expensive like it gets to the point where i don't know about this man uh you might notice this right here where it says add suggested products and you might be wondering why that's bugging me it's because we um well at this point now it's telling me we need grass am i out of grass hang on i'm out of grass okay we do need to buy it um I was I was hoping that the supply I had would last until this is harvested, but it doesn't look like it did. So I will have to buy it one more time at least, maybe two more times. We should stock up actually for the winter. Maybe I'll go ahead and buy. Um, can we store forty thousand? That's a lot. Oh, that's a lot. We're gonna harvest a whole bunch. Can we store? Let's say six thousand for now. Organic grass, and then um. Why don't we also go ahead and oats are very expensive, so we're not gonna buy those. We're gonna want to harvest those. We're gonna have to, we're gonna want to grow our own oats. But I was looking for the crops. I think it's in the cereals area down here. Yeah. The crops are only thirty cents like this. Um, let's go ahead and buy six thousand of that, and also. Uh, what about wheat? What does wheat cost me? Where is wheat? Is it here? Yeah. What does wheat cost me? That's pretty expensive too, man. We're going to want to be wheat farmers next season. Definitely. Uh, perhaps some straw so that we don't eat into our um, grass for the silage. We could probably get like another, say 3,000 kilograms of straw as well. 
for 858 bucks. And then we can start making silage from that. So let's change the recipe on this one to use the organic straw. No? Can't use organic straw? Really? Uh oh. Am I just gonna be out of luck on that then? Maybe I have to have it until... Maybe I have to have it in order to work with it. Yikes, so there's the turn of the month. We just spent money and now we're at negative 24,000. We'll get back in the in the green sooner or later, but um, back in the green, back in the black uh, sooner or later, but it takes a little bit of time. We have to sell stuff, but it'll happen. And then I hopefully don't have to buy any more food once this happens too. All right, so it looks like we're gonna need more sheep if we wanna keep hammering on that sheep cheese. That's very good. If we can make consistent sheep, sh sheep cheese, it's very good money. I really want to see these crops. You know what? I'm going to cut it and I'll come back when these crops are ready to be harvested so you can see it. So give me a second. All right. We're producing all sorts of good stuff now, guys. So uh, we kind of got the milk, cow's milk sort of dwindled down to the point where we were about to start having to wait. So once again, switched back to the goats. Uh, we had already accumulated a whole bunch of different milk there. So this is kind of my life now. I'm just swapping back and forth, right? We're basically making too much cow's milk for one to process in much. So we'll build up a, a big supply while this is happening. Uh, and then we just switch this one to it, which processes it a little faster than we're producing it, etc., cetera, et cetera, uh, and allows us to bank up this. So it's not that inefficient. And until we can get a third one of these establishments, that's pretty much how we have to do it. And then we can start getting more sheep, which then will just saturate one all the time. And then we can maybe look at maybe more cows than another one of these. In any case, uh, this crop is now two days until the harvest. So we're almost there, ready to see him do it. And it's uh, very stormy. It had lots of rain, lots of uh, dark overcast skies. Not very sunny in our farm right now. Uh, I do like how this crop is going to pop about four, three days after this one. So they can basically do this one, get it all done. And then right when they're done with that, they can go ahead and start on this one. I, I do like that. One thing we could do to help us with money uh, is instead of, and we'll go ahead and do this now, but instead of having three permanent employee houses, we could have just two permanent employee houses and then they manage our animals seasonally. like or all the time, right? They manage our animals and process milk and all that. And then the farming and stuff, that can be seasonal employees, right? We, we don't need people to, these extra employees to be here all the time, right? Uh, I think I'll, I'll probably keep them this, this time around, but I think a lot of these guys should be seasonal when we're doing the crops over on this side. Uh, and then we have different houses for that too. There's a, there's a house here, let me go to social. There's the house for seasonal employees, right? And um, it's got 12 beds in it as opposed to this one having eight. So you can have more employees in that house, but they are only there for a certain uh, time period throughout the year. And then you can you can govern what that time period is as well. You can say, I want you here from these months, you know, these this day to this day kind of thing. All right, so we're going over and uh, basically mowing, right? We're mowing the grass. That's what the mower does. Yeah, if you didn't know. That's what it does. But look at how much grass we're getting for this, right? It's quite a lot for this little spot here. And uh, and then we'll go with the self-loading trailer and we'll just drive over it. And that trailer will like load all the grass into it. It's pretty nice. So this will take a little bit of time to, to happen. Most likely it will be done. Uh, it probably won't be done before this one's ready. Looks like this one's almost ready. We could help out with that by getting another tractor. But I think this year, because I'm not sure how the winter is going to affect us. I think this year I'm going to go ahead and just have one tractor only. And then next year, right, we can get more sheep, maybe some goats. Uh, I don't know if it's if it's worth having goats over just having more sheep just because of what we're making. But uh, that's, that's the way you go with it, man. Um, I've got three silos now just because I suspect we're going to have to start doing silage like in the silos for the winter. I, I don't know this, but I, I suspect we're gonna need extra storage and stuff for that. So I'm gonna do that. Having this extra barn was actually a great idea as well, because we're probably gonna need more storage for all the grass. So, all right, so there we go. How much can we actually harvest out of this, I wonder? Let's see how we do. 
So the tractor is, he's gonna go back because he needs a break, but somebody else is gonna go ahead and grab this. And, uh, oh yeah, now they're, then they're gonna rake it, right? Yeah, yeah, they rake it up into big piles so that the trailer can, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of processing to this. I don't know, are we gonna get to this in time? I don't know, Bears fruit, we're ready to go. I wonder if we're gonna get to this in time. This is gonna take a while, man. Uh-oh. Maybe I do need another tractor. Oh, uh, you know, I really don't want them to like have this stuff spoil for the frost. I'm gonna get a second tractor, I think. Yeah, I'd like to put it in a garage too, unfortunately. Uh, for the time being, we're gonna have to sit it outside. We'll sit it over here, just for the time being. But having that extra tractor, hopefully that means somebody can come over here and do this. <laughs> we'll see. Oh no. What do you need right now? No tractor. No, there is. There is now. Yep. Okay. Uh, and there's the self-loading right there. There we go. So now we're going to load up that grass into the uh, into the, the trailer. And then it can get delivered. So we shouldn't need to buy any more grass. Winter starts in 50 days. Oh, we got time. 50 days. Where are we at? Man, in Michigan, it's, if it's November... You already have snow. <laughs> like, if it's November already, you might as well be. Ex you've, you should have already winterized your sprinkler systems. Put it that way. If you haven't done that already, you're late. All right, there we go. 20,000 organic grass is now in storage here. That's pretty good. Uh, I don't know if it's enough to take us through the whole winter. It may not be, but 20,000 is a lot. And uh, now from this point on, grass, is, grass becomes incredibly cheap, right, to, uh, to get. We don't have to buy it anymore. At least after the winter is over, we won't have to buy it anymore. And it becomes a, a big process of sort of like, can we store enough of it, right? I don't know. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. It looks to me like we don't have a whole lot of silage. We don't have a whole lot of silage. No, we do not. Um, wow. Hmm, well, we have a lot of grass to turn into it, but we have to do it faster. Um, is this, I thought it was warehouses, but it's not. Where is it? Production? Yeah, right here. Oh boy. I'm gonna get a third one. I'm gonna put it right back here. I don't know if we'll be able to, I don't know if we'll be able to sustain that. I mean, we have a lot of grass, so as long as we can keep making it, I suppose it's fine, right? Um, let's get one of the goat cheese guys to come over here. Ryan, how are you? At manufacturing. I mean, that's eh, whatever. Uh, how about yours? Endurance. I like you. Yeah, summer. Uh, summer, we're going to move you, and we're going to stick you over here, and you're going to work this instead. Wait, what? Hold on. Should have summer available. There we go. Sign her here. All right, see if we can get some more silage made. My goodness, we're using it up pretty fast. All right, so we're harvesting this now too. Look at that, nice. Oh, yeah, picking it up. Hold on, can we get closer to this? Um, also, I wanted to show you guys this too. Um, there's a good photo mode for this. It could be improved. And let me tell you why the photo mode could be improved. You, you might notice that the entire time you're playing, there's a little camera icon down here. And if you click this, it instantly takes you into photo mode, gets the UI out of the way. It's really nice for my thumbnails. I'm gonna be using it. Um, in fact, I already have. But uh, here's the problem with it though. You can see the problem. Do you see the issue with photo mode? The models are such a low resolution that it makes, it's unfortunate because you really want to get close to these things. You can see them work. And the models are such a low resolution that it's almost just, it kind of breaks your heart to look at photo mode instead of, you know? Yeah, it's it's just not great. Um, I wish it was better. I wish the models were higher resolution, but they're not. So, uh, and this, this applies to pretty much everything. Granted, you're gonna spend the overwhelming majority of your time on this overhead view, and that's where it looks really good. But if you zoom in to like these cows, for example, it's just like, man, I wish I saw a cow instead of like, it, it, makes, me, it makes me feel like I need to put on my glasses, you know? So in any case, it's got a really nice photo mode because um, you get right down in there and any angle you want. 
it's just unfortunate that when you get down in there and look at it at the angles you want, you discover how low quality it is. Uh, oh, I had, didn't change this, did I? Here, do this. All right, hopefully now we can get some more silage. Otherwise, my cows are going to be hungry. If I tell them, if I tell the farmers to use both of these and one of these is not available, then they simply won't feed them. <laughs> so it's very important to do that. Uh, and actually, how much, how much do we have for beets now? The fodder beets. Do we have a whole lot of them? 8,900 fodder beets. All right. Let's go ahead and increase, improve the food of all of our cows. Just a little bit more. Make them really happy. Okay. Happy cows leads to more milk, hopefully. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all right, so see, now we're out of this, right? We're in the point now where this is no longer processing enough, right? That's the unfortunate bit. Um, once we get sheep's milk delivered, cool, it starts doing it again. But now we're in that point where you're like, you're gonna process it and wait, process it and wait, process it and wait. And uh, we don't. I don't like that. So I'm gonna have to now switch this back to cow's milk. So we'll wait till this is done. So I don't interrupt it in the middle of the sequence. I like them to pop out the product to sell first. And then uh, we'll switch this back. And we can see the prices on stuff, right? They don't seem like they've changed all that much. Um, can I look at that actually? What's the price of this? It's actually gone up over time. So that's, that's very good. So we're gonna sell all of this stuff. Look at this. And if I wanna just sell the sheep's milk straight up, it's actually a decent value too. So I don't have to babysit this if I don't want to. I mean, it can just, we could just flat out do it. Um, the wool and stuff is worth quite a bit too. So let's sell all of this. And now we're up to 113,000. So that's gonna do it for me today, guys. Um, and again, if we had seasonal employees, we could maybe have them not farming this. Cause I think they're actually taking up seeds. Like I have to buy the seeds and stuff for this. So I wonder if it's possible for me to just shut this off. Can I just, whoop, I don't want to do that. Can I just shut this off? What was this? Fodder beats, right? Is it possible for me to just say, hey, don't do this right now? I don't think it's possible, but in any case, they're going to stop once the ground doesn't support it anymore. I think seasonal employees are better. And in the next video, we'll see what the winter is like. Huh? I don't know. I'm going to let it keep running, earn up as much money as I can so that I can buy things from the market. And uh, when we come back for the next one, that's what it'll be. Uh, so if you guys like this, remember, show some engagement there. Give me those comments, those likes, all that stuff. Uh, that tells me that you like the video. And, uh, you know, by watching it, that tells me that you like it and I can keep playing it. All right. Take it easy, guys. We'll see ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>